the keys to building a profitable boudoir photography business. Boudoir photography is a really profitable niche and a lot of photographers are afraid of it, but they don't need to be. As someone who's run a profitable boudoir photography business for eight years, I can teach you how to build a reputable and profitable one for yourself. So keep watching for the keys to succeed in our industry. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional boudoir photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing this since 2010. So I made the switch to boudoir in 2015. It is currently summer of 2023 when we're doing this video. So it has been eight years and I've learned so much along the way. But I will say the things that made me money and made me profitable, not always the same thing, as a family and portrait photographer are exactly the same things that are doing it in my boudoir studio. And I'm going to share with you those four keys to success. Number one is differentiate yourself. Number two, price yourself for profit. Number three, market relentlessly. And number four, invest in your education. No, this isn't just a sales pitch to get you over to boudoirguild.com where you can purchase courses to learn how to make multiple six figures of revenue just like I do. It's not one of those. Even if you don't go buy the courses, you're still gonna learn a ton from me. So please keep watching. I'm gonna drop some knowledge bombs on you to help you run a profitable boudoir photography business. So firstly, differentiate yourself. I did that with a few different ways. One is my lighting and my posing because no one shoots like I do. I never learned traditional boudoir. I never wanted to. I shoot all of my work like it's a Chanel ad. Like we're trying to sell really expensive perfume and we have Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata playing in the background. That is for me, the style of my photography. That's what I want it all to feel like. It's dark, it's dramatic, it's elegant. It's not suggestive, it's not sexual. There's nothing, I mean, I rarely ever take any photos that are any kind of suggestive. For me, I would rather show my clients as being strong, confident, elegant, feminine. Those things can be sexy, but I never have people bite things or lick things or hook their high heel in their underwear. I think it's cheese ball. You might enjoy it and that's amazing. It's not for me. So just looking at the work that I do, it's not traditional boudoir. I don't look like everybody else's. So my stuff does not look like any other boudoir photographer's portfolio, which is instant differentiation. Also, in the way that I market my services, I don't advertise that I take sexy photos. I advertise that what I do is more of a therapy session. I help people change the way that they see themselves. Again, I, I even have it on my website. It says, I do not take sexy photos. That's not the point of what I do. I wanna help people build their self-esteem and stop just focusing on their perceived flaws, but rather the 99% of the rest of them that they actually like about themselves. So that transformation, that's what I'm selling. It's not sexy photos. And, and again, that differentiates me. It may not be your jam. You might want to take sexy photos and that is amazing. There's a ton of people out there who want that. So figure out what it is that makes you different. It's not that you're a professional, you're really good at lighting, you're super friendly. It's, it's none of those things. And you can't just say, well, I'm different, I'm special, and that's enough. You have to actually know what the thing is that differentiates you. Also, lowering your prices is not the way to do that. And that's gonna lead us into point number two, Price yourself for profit. I can't tell you how many times in the Facebook groups I see photographers who will share screenshots from a local mom's group or something, and it's someone in there saying, you know, mini session specials, 50 digital images, and a new car for every boudoir client, $70 or something. And the person's complaining that they can't compete with those kind of prices. Well, cheers to someone charging 70 bucks for a boudoir session. My sales average is 4,000 this year, plus my session fee, and I am happy to not compete with a $70 boudoir photographer because I don't offer cheap shoots. That's not why people book me. They book me because my work is different and because I solve a psychological need for them. And someone else may offer to do it cheaper, that's great, but there is perceived value. All value is perceived. When you tell someone something costs something, they will believe it. If you want a car, you can buy a Mercedes or you can buy a Hyundai. They will both get you to the place, but the more expensive thing has 
a different perceived value. And it's not practical. None of this is rational. It's all entirely emotional, but that's how we make decisions. And you might be thinking, I don't. I don't do that. I only make logical decisions. It's just not true. It's psychology. Every single decision we make is emotionally backed. And then we justify it to make it sound logical because our identity, and again, lots of psychology here, we don't believe ourselves to be flawed. We're like, no, I'm smart. I know what I'm doing. I'm making good choices. So a uh, fun challenge. I love throwing this out there. If you believe there is a decision you've made that is logical and not emotionally driven, drop it down in the comments and I'll tell you why it's actually an emotional decision. I love this game. So again, pricing yourself for profit. You have to make money to be in business. The number one job of a business is to make money. Money is the blood of the business. Without it, you die. Try living for a day without blood. I would say, tell me how that goes, but you can't because you'll be dead. Your business needs money to stay alive. If you don't want to charge money, if you don't feel comfortable asking for it, the business is going to die. So you need to get comfortable asking for money and charging what you're worth. And being comfortable asking for money is a belief that what you do is valuable. And if you don't believe that, your clients will never believe that. And then they'll never pay those prices. But if you say, I'm good at what I do, I provide a valuable service for people, and I attract the kind of clients that are happy to pay that, and then you put yourself out there with that kind of energy, you will attract those people, and they will pay you. And you're like, holy crap, it worked. And then it gets really easy to ask for, you know, two, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars a session. Once someone's done it once, you know how that feels? You're like, okay, I can do this again. My very first IPS session was my very first actual professional client back in 2012, 2013. Um, I did a lot of portfolio building and a lot of like headshots and one-offs and stuff before I really had like my full printout price list, IPS session, the way that I still operate today. And I made $5,500 off that first portrait client. My hands were literally shaking as I took the check out of her hand because we didn't have like square and credit card swipers. I don't even know if we had smartphones at that point. Anyway, uh, my hands were literally shaking. I couldn't believe someone paid me $5,500 for a photo shoot. I didn't even think the photos were that great, but it's what it meant to them was well worth the 5,500 bucks. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's do this. And maybe my brain works a little different for most people's, but I decided at that point, like, well, if one person will do it, somebody else will do it too. And I have not lowered my prices. I've only raised them since then. Um, and that's why my average sales, $4,000. And I, like to me, selling my 4K package, it's my most common package. Like that's just a Tuesday. Like I don't even think about it now because I'm so comfortable receiving that kind of money but it took some practice, it took some getting used to. Cheers to that. But if you're operating on discounts and giving people deals and selling yourself short and refusing to actually price yourself to run a profitable photography business, you'll never be a profitable photography business. So boudoirguild.com, check out the pricing course, sales and pricing, where I show you demo videos of how I do my IPS sessions. Like I actually had a client come in, I mic'd her up at the door. I'm pointing to the door that you can't see right now. I mic'd her up at the door with her permission, of course, and we did her whole IPS session. I had video cameras and lights in here. So you can hear us doing the conversations, watch the actual reveal, and see what it is we're doing. Plus, I teach you how to build a profitable price list like what I have. So if, you know, 1500 is your base price, great. If 5000 is the price you wanna hit, awesome. You can structure it however you want. This is the format and how to choose the products that go in there. Uh, again, boudoirguild.com, it's all in there. All right, number three is market relentlessly. I can't tell you how many times someone has booked me and said, you know, I see you everywhere. I was scrolling Instagram and one of your ads popped up and then, you know, I was looking up something on Facebook and one of my friends had tagged you in a post and I don't know, I was at this one shop the other day and your pictures weren't on the wall and I'm like, I gotta call this guy. Uh, that's the universe telling me that it's time to book a session. And I'm like, yeah, because I market relentlessly. I'm everywhere. I do not want to give people an opportunity to not know who I am. Did I start that way? No. Well, kind of. Let me, let me explain. I started marketing like that in the beginning because I didn't know what was going to work. So 
I did in-store events and I ran Facebook ads and I did SEO for my website and I donated to charity auctions and I volunteered at events. And one of my favorite things to do, I go to high school home and school club or booster, athletic booster fundraiser events, not where there's a raffle, but where there's an auction. Key difference because I go introduce myself to the the MC, whoever's doing the auctioneering, uh, I guess the auctioneer uh, and everybody else. And I have my display set up because I donated a thing to the auction or the raffle, whatever. Whenever they start a new auction, I'm the first one to raise my hand. So they say, oh, Mike Lloyd Studios in for $50, in for $100. They say my name out loud over the microphone probably 50 times in a night. Everyone knows who I am by the end of it. So that is a a fun way to go market yourself. And if you do it right, you're the first bid. You don't actually have to buy any of the products. But I ended up buying a fancy bottle of tequila. I don't even drink tequila. Uh, And I bought a seafood dinner. I took my parents out for dinner that night. So be prepared to buy the thing. But if you're the first bidder, you're probably not going to have to. Fun marketing hack there for you. Anywho, I am everywhere because it's not any one of those things necessarily that brings in all of the business, but it's the fact that Mike Lloyd Studios sponsors all of the kids' plays and I do the actor headshots and stuff. It's the fact that I've probably done headshots inside of their office building. It's that I'm running Facebook and Google and Instagram ads and my name is popping up everywhere. It's that whenever they go shopping, I don't know, there might be a trunk show where my stuff is featured in it or maybe there's pictures that I've taken inside those clothing stores so I put myself everywhere Uh, I even got spotted going to the airport not too long ago which was pretty funny Uh, on my TikTok channel I do posing demonstrations which a lot of boudoir photographers do but it's all ladies doing this stuff I'm like the only dude that I know of who is demonstrating sexy boudoir poses Uh, I think it's freaking hilarious and my audience does too but I was going through security at the airport and the TSA agent pulls me aside and I'm like what did I do and she goes are you a photographer I'm like I am she goes I love your TikTok videos thank you and high fives me And then I I got back in line. But just the fact that, you know, I got spotted in public because someone who isn't even interested in a shoot follows me because they like my content. I am everywhere. And so can you. Even during the recession, when everybody stopped marketing because we didn't know when we were going to open, I kept marketing like nothing had changed. And I just pre-booked shoots and I stayed top of mind. And as soon as we could open the doors again, I had six months worth of clients on the books in no time because I never stopped marketing. As soon as you stop marketing, um, where did I learn this? Within the marketing book podcast, one of the metaphors that the Douglas used was marketing is like walking up the down escalator. As soon as you stop moving, you're immediately moving backwards. There is no stasis. You're either going forward or you're going backward. And, and that really, really hit home for me. So market relentlessly, do not stop because it's that onslaught of you into the public eye that's going to fill your calendar. Number four, invest in your education. And again, this isn't just a commercial to go to boudoirguild.com and buy my courses. I learn from lots of business people who are smarter than me in all different industries. I go to events all over the country. I get mentorship from people in different industries, whether it's travel or e-commerce or biotech. Who else have I worked with? Um, Clothing manufacturers. I love hanging out with people who do business because we can sit down over cocktails or coffee and just learn from each other, you know? And it's simple things. Like I launched a nonprofit last year and I just got everything approved. I'm waiting for the paperwork to actually show up so we can get that going. But I flew out to Nashville last year to have breakfast with the founder of Priceline.com to find out how I can use my nonprofit to grow my business and how to use the business to grow my nonprofit. Because this guy is a billionaire and he does a ton of, of community work and volunteer work. And it's just like one of the most giving humans on the planet. So I will happily fly across the country to have the most expensive breakfast of my life with somebody, you know, plane tickets, hotel, all that. I was literally out there just to have breakfast with this dude. But I learned so much from that little meeting with him. I mean, it probably cost me like $8,000. And you might be thinking $8,000 for a breakfast. I can't swing that. 
It's cool. I couldn't either in the beginning, but what I did was I took whatever little profit I could get and I reinvested it in education and I kept learning and it's books and it's podcasts and it's YouTube channels like this. This stuff didn't exist when I got started. I didn't have this luxury, but you do. So just take advantage of every, every bit of educational material available to you with the one caveat that you actually have to put it into action because education can be an investment or it can be a form of procrastination. And it's really, really easy to say, well, I just need one more course. I got to read one more book. I have to listen to one more podcast about whatever before I actually start to do the thing. And the book Ready, Fire, Aim, I love that book. It's exactly that. Ready, fire, and then aim. Just start, get going, do something, and then learn from it and repeat and learn as you go but do the thing. Because if you wait till you're ready, you're never going to be ready. So education will absolutely throw fuel on the fire, but you got to light the fire first and actually get started. All right, so those are my four big tips for growing a profitable photography studio. Number one, you have to differentiate yourself. Make sure there's a reason they choose you over anybody else. Number two, price yourself for profit because without money, your business will die. Number three, market relentlessly. Do not give people an opportunity to not know who you are. And number four, invest in your education whatever that may look like. But we are always learning, always growing, always surrounding ourselves with new resources to make us even better at what we're doing or to do it in less time or lower our costs or whatever. There's always room to grow. I have some other great videos on this channel as well, like my favorite ways to grow a business in 2023, my favorite marketing tactics as well. Really just scroll back for the last four weeks of videos and you're gonna find a ton of great stuff about launching your profitable photography business. Or again, head to boudoirguild.com, just take the shortcut. It's your Disneyland fast pass and start making money because you are amazing. I'll see you inside.